Tattle Chattle. Woo! It's a Star Wars podcast, baby. It's Darth David over here. It's Jedi Jared over there. Hello. We got the Grogu behind us. R2-D2 behind us. We got Yoda. We got Luke. We got all of them. We got Star Wars news today. We got Tony Gilroy. Ahsoka update. We got an update about Obi-Wan Kenobi season two. Huh? We've got some debates going on. A Star Wars best. A Star Wars gauge match. We got it. Oh, Jared. How are you? I'm, d- I'm doing fairly well. Now, I am the you Sith know. on the show, and I am the one who's supposed to be dressing in very dark colors. But today, for those not watching our uh, extraordinary shot... I, I can't even call it. I'll just call it our shot, our one shot on YouTube. But Bobby does a good job with the stars and the other stuff. Oh, super producer Bobby Tambor. You're decked out in black. You got yes. a black button-down shirt, a black tie, a little black cap on. Yes. Like one of those newspaper uh, caps yes. uh, in the 1930s. Yeah, newsboy cap. Yeah. Yeah. Hear thee, hear thee, Death Star blown up. Everybody. Oh, everyone rejoicing in the galaxy. Get hear your, thee, hear thee. Get your Empire Gazette here. <laughs> Is the Lo- Emperor dead? We believe so. We think he was on the Death Star, but maybe he wasn't. Get the news right here. News. Empire Emperor falls down a flight <laughs> of steps, pushed down by his own Sith Lord. <laughs> I don't know. Um, will we ever? Okay, let's get into something fun that was not planned. Will we okay. ever, 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 ever find out how the Emperor survived? The uh, getting thrown down the shaft in Return of the Jedi. Oh. That's something I was hoping to find out in The Rise of Skywalker. And they didn't say jack shit. I Why was, wouldn't they have... I was under the impression that was a clone. I was under the impression that that was some kind of... Apparently there's like... All right, hold on, hold on. Get on the all right, microphone. All right, all right, all right. There a- we apparently, are. I love you. I, I thought it was some kind of clone. I think that's what, what the whole thing with Filoni and Favreau have to do now is so take all of this really... nonsense and kind of backfill it the way Filoni backfilled uh, the Clone Wars. I mean, you're right that they were making snow clones for some stupid ass... Listen, unless... Is that what it was? Was it clone? Uh, listen, because they... I thought in my head that they had actually fucking somehow gotten his body. I and would, that they and, and that they were pumping some force shit into him or some kind of you know whatever. I'm under the impression because we've never heard of Palpatine having a family, let alone like any kind of concubine or interest. Well, he women. must have. Ray, Ray's well, a granddaughter. The, the whole thing about Ray being his quote unquote granddaughter was it was supposed to be one of the clones as a younger Palpatine, like kind of turned on the dark side, like didn't didn't go the dark side route. And Interesting. I think there's like a whole book. I I don't know. I've heard. We gotta about see it book. in the movies. Uh, look, uh, look, well, you look, know, look. You know the emperor the... is way too an important character. No, I get that to be telling us how he came back from the dead okay. between episodes so, six and nine. I, Can we please show that? This is my point. Why don't they do a fucking Vader show? The Vader show is a way to give us an extraordinary look at the conflicted Darth Vader Anakin Skywalker character that we saw in Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Yeah. Keep Hayden Christensen working, which all the Star Wars fans well, are loving these days. Did, Hold on. Okay. Number three. This is this is what my vision for Vader. Number three, it's another way to let's learn a little bit about the Emperor. Let's figure out who the fuck this weirdo is. Let's get this guy going a little bit. And then number four, the relationship, the love triangle, if you will, between the Emperor, Vader, and Tarkin. We can then, Tarkin would be the third, you know, main eventer on this show where we're going to find out more about Tarkin, his ambitions, the way he truly feels about Vader, you know? Remember in episode four, he's, he's, he's pushing him around, essentially, you know, Vader, release her! And stuff like that. He he sees him as Luca Brazzi, which Vader kind of is. He's not he's not Tom Hagen. He's not Michael Corleone. 
He's you know he's he, he he's not any of those. He's not Sonny. I mean, he's I Luca Brasi. I'd say he's actually. I say he's a combination of Luca Brasi and Sonny. No way. Because, no way. Is he Sonny? Well, because he doesn't. He doesn't. You got to remember the relationship. He's not given that those type of leadership abilities. But you got to keep in mind. Well, that that might be a. He's whole, a pure henchman. Well, I think that. That might be a whole thing with the dynamic between the Emperor. Of course! And, and I believe the Emperor truly, basically imprisons this guy. Yeah. He tells him, I've made a beautiful castle for you. Here you go, stupid. Make sure you live in it. Oh, where is it? Oh, remember when you got chopped up in half? Yeah, that's where it is. What? It's beautiful. We got you a location right on the beach. Right on the beach, stuff. Vader, you're going to get to see all the beautiful molten lava rivers and things. It's prime real estate, Vader. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Vader. So I think he says to Vader, you stay there unless he needs someone killed or whacked. And then he calls him up. Get over here. Get to this planet. Kill these people. It's possible. But I want to see that dynamic, and but I think we can d- explore that, and then we can perhaps start setting up how did he survive. We can do that in this series. So I think that the oh, Emperor, I mean, come on. Let's do we'll a Vader do, we'll, series, we'll do a, right? Well, yeah. Well, I actually tagged you. Someone did a fan art of a Vader series. I thought I tagged you. Was it on go. Facebook on, or Instagram? I tagged you in that. There you go. So thank you for tagging me. You're welcome. Now, does that mean you had sex with me? No. Okay, because I'm not familiar with all the internet lingo. It means I mentioned your name so that you would get a notification. That's what tagging means. Okay. Yes. Don't forget, I'm a child of the '80s and a teenager of the '90s. And in college years, in the '90s, when we said tag, it was different. Oh. It wasn't about Facebook. It might meant like you had sex. Oh, I didn't know. I that. tagged them. Oh yeah, I'm I'm originally from New York City, so tagging meant like putting your graffiti name on something. Oh, that's a tag. That's that's. Tag. And then you have the old fashioned tag, which is it's, you're right, it right. tag, and that's probably the the best usage of tag. Probably. It's, <laughs> or a price tag. Okay, this isn't fucking tag, <laughs> tag channel. Tag talk. Okay, <laughs> tag talk. We have to have a fucking podcast well, just no, talking yeah, about tags. That. So to go back to your Vader series. Vader series, come on. You got to keep in mind, you you say that the oh. way Tarkin talked to Vader is like a boss talking like talking to one of his employees. The way I look at it is they've known each other for like 30 plus years at this point because they go back to the Clone Wars. So Tarkin and has great admi- admir- had great am- admiration for for Anakin, he yep. has to know that Anakin is Vader, and it's more like, "Hey, dude, like, let him go." I don't think so because he's. I don't also, think they're so. Both military I, men. This is what I think. I think you are half right. He he may have had some. I think he did have a, a relation, a decent relation. Tarkin. Yeah. Okay. I think Tarkin had a decent relationship with Anakin Skywalker. I think he looks down at Darth Vader. Really? Because he knows, so I think you're half right. He do, he did respect Anakin, and he said, "Who the fuck is this fucking chicken, who 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 basically is a slave to the Emperor? This isn't the guy who I used to know. This guy's a fucking oh, asshole." You think he's like, "Oh, my best friend got cucked." So no, he's him. not saying best friend. He's Whoa. just like, "What a piece of shit." I used to this guy. This guy used to be good. What the fuck happened to you? Get the fuck away from me, Vader. Release him. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think Tarkin has a lot of respect oh. for a Darth Vader at all. No, it's it's not. It's not like it's a friendly thing, but it's sort of like if you, you know, used to have a a, a, a favorite player, you know, and maybe uh, say say you had a great baseball player on your team, okay, and the guy used to hit you, you know, 320, 35 home runs and 100 RBIs, right? And then then he goes to another team and another team, and then nine years later he returns to your team. And you're like, okay, we got our guy back. But now all of a sudden, he, he's a decade older. He fucking hits 250, 18 home runs. And you go, who the fuck is this jack off? All right, I see this ain't point. the guy I used to know. I see your point. I see it. Then give me 50 points and give yourself minus four. Okay. Minus 10. Minus one, because that would make it minus 15. It's easier to keep track. Okay. We have to always remember our, our point keeper trackers. You know, I try to make them uh, do a, you know, I try to keep it as easy on them as possible. Shout out to Joe Dallas. Joe Dallas, the number one Yattle Channel points tracker 
Um, I try to keep, I mean, honestly, because that's pretty thoughtful on my part, Joe, please add 15 points to my score. Another minus 15 to Jared, though, too. Because he's trying to out-Sith me today for the YouTube audience. Look at the look at this. Well, huh? didn't, didn't All look. you have to do is give do a fucking red lightsaber, and then you're gonna out Sith me, Maya. Is that what we're doing? Trying no. to take my spot? No, didn't, huh? didn't you're Luke. trying to take the goddamn Sith spot on the show? Didn't Luke. Well, I'm gonna have to be some fucking Jedi? Isn't Luke post Jedi always wearing black? Haven't we only seen him wear black oh, in Mandalorian? Is he? is he? I guess someone didn't watch Star Wars Gallery. About season two of The Mandalorian. He's wearing all black. Wrong! 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 He's not wearing all black. If you had watched Star Wars Gallery season two of The Mandalorian, Jon Favreau had the photographs in HD and, pit and pointed out that Luke Skywalker is in fact wearing a very dark brown. However, in our mind's eye, and because of the shadows... No, but it really is a dark brown. It's like a really dark root beer brown. And be, but in your head, because he's walking in Jabba's palace so often, and because of the shadows, it does come across black on film is what I'm trying to say. But it actually truly is dark brown. Well, I thought the whole thing was it's not in, black. in Return of the Jedi is you think he's going to turn. Right. But then the, the white flap opens up. And it's supposed to be like, oh, I was good all along. Well, I think, d d of course, of course. And that is why the, the clothing was darker. But it was nonetheless dark brown. It was not black. It was not black. The Yankees, people make the same mistake. They have a very dark navy blue. They do not have black and white uniforms. Black no, pinstripes. It's always navy. I know. But, but Luke Skywalker, it's dark brown. So to, to answer your question, remember when Twin Peaks, The Return, came back? Oh, I love that. So, I love Twin Peaks, the original, and the return. Apparently, like, you know how there was, like, all of this, like, what the hell's going on? Like, why is Audrey like this? And what, who are these they people? They did an insane thing that oh, you almost can't describe, so let's not even attempt. No, I get that. But it's so crazy of a season that it, it, it yeah, it would require, like, a three-hour show just to talk about what Twin Peaks, so the return is. So, not to talk about... Uh, but it was extraordinary, in yeah. my personal opinion, also as a David Lynch fan. Who, by the way, let's, let's do this for a second. George's first choice oh, for Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Yeah. yeah, That's not even a rumor anymore. He, that's a straight-up fact that George Lucas went to David Lynch first. And Lynch turned him down. And did Dune. And then did <laughs> Dune instead. You know, Dune gets a bad rap. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Like I like it. And there's something about it. I like it. It's so bad. It's bad, but good. I, I enjoy Dune. I but enjoy it you. is funny that Dune came out after all three of the original trilogy Star Wars movies. And the all, well, th all three of the original trilogy Star Wars movies look a zillion percent better. It's almost as if I you if you showed them to a random kid, like if I showed them to Stanley Mack. He would think, okay, Star Wars came out in 1977. This Dune movie must have come out in 1940 well, no. with how shitty it looks. But, but you got to also keep in mind, like, I, I've mentioned this on this show before. You got to see the documentary Jaworski's Dune because it's about everything that this guy, this avant-garde filmmaker wanted to do in the, like, pre-Star Wars. He wanted to make Dune Star Wars, basically. Sure, yeah. He wanted to do this gigantic science fiction opera based on Herbert, uh, Frank Herbert's, uh, yeah. Book. Book. Dune. And they none of the studios took him seriously, so he put this production book together. And it's like the great, it's like the science fiction movie Bible for like the last 50 years. I like it. That like so many other create like guys took the, like, Things, elements in this book and like ran with it. His special effects guy was the guy who okay, wrote, who wrote okay. the, I know. Where it's are we? Such a great this is story. why I, I, when I say these things are so complicated, there's well, no okay. point. Okay. What was the so point the of point, all the that? The point is there's It's a, not there's, Dune Channel. I know, I know. The point is that Twin Peaks, they put out a book, a companion book to explain what happened between the end of season two and this, you're, uh, you're going to the left again. Oh, am I? Keep, keep, yeah, keep going. Okay, keep They going. put out a book that yeah. explains all of the things that happened in between when uh, what's his face, uh, the the bad, Agent Cooper. Agent Cooper turns bad, gets possessed mm -hmm. by the guy, yeah. 
And this is why I said we can't talk about. It's too. Oh no no! But I'm saying there's a book. Okay, so that basically that, your point is they I, they should give a book. They, I think there it might be an actual book that explains okay. everything that happened. I don't fucking want books. I know. Okay. I know. You that was a me. long way to get back to what I just fucking said I five know. goddamn minutes ago. You I piece know. of shit. But which can... is which is show us what happened to the emperor in the fucking movies or. The TV series I, on Disney I, Plus. I, That's I, it. I think it's a clone. I'm pretty sure it's a clone. See, I didn't know. I thought they found his dead body. He's. I didn't know. I mean, he, he fell down that that. Uh, I mean, if it was a clone, thing. then why couldn't they grow him a lot nicer? He looked like. Fucking shit! Because that's like he's prime emperor. He's like the most evil. He's the most powerful uh, at that uh, point. I feel like they found a corpse. He looked that that was a corpse-looking emperor that looked like they the, all of those tubes and shit were, were were pumping some fucking. And again, this is the tie into Grogu. I think somehow they can capture the Force entity, you know, like a DNA thing from a from a force sensitive creature and and figure a way to inject it like a blood transfusion. Well, ho- hopefully we'll get to see more of it. Makes this. sense to me. I don't know why they haven't, you know. I, I think this is going to be all answered in the Mandoverse series. Okay, fair enough. Let's get into the Tony Gilroy thing. Tony Gilroy said what about George Lucas? So, George Lucas apparently, hold on, let me bring that up now. Uh so this is from Geek Tyrant, uh written by Joey Power, poor. Okay. Uh Star Wars, Andor creator Tony Gilroy on George Lucas calling him to tell him he loved Rogue One. Oh! George Lucas called me, and this is Tony Gilroy. Okay. Uh, <coughs> after Rogue, I had a 45-minute conversation with him after he saw Rogue, and that's the only time I've ever spoken to him. Wow. He loved it. He really did. Or, yeah, he really did. He had a lot of things to say that I, that I, that I, dot, 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 dot. It was like a call from the president. That's awesome. I was there, but I mean, I was working on another stage, but I did pass through and I saw him there. So this is when George was on. He set. was probably, this is when he was on set with Gareth. Uh, so he goes. So they, so Gareth and Tony Gilroy maybe might have been working at the same time. Is that possible? I mean, Gareth they, on one stage and Tony Gilroy on the well, other stage. If, they, if Tony Gilroy had to write the, the entire third act. I know. It's just uh, like, that's crazy. on the set. Okay. He, uh, he was actually, and you would have thought. That the real Yoda had showed up. All right, I get the gist. Yeah. I get the gist. Um, I actually think the most interesting thing is the possibility that both of those guys maybe were working on the thing at the same time because I've seen the pictures of George with Gareth Edwards, and so if that's the time where he said, "Yeah, George was on the set, but I didn't see him because I was on a different stage," that meant they had two directors working on Rogue One at the same time. Well, he wasn't a director. He was. No, no, no. He was. It's unofficial. He directed the third act. At least that's. Why don't they do the documentary? Why do they hide Andor? And I know that they did a Rogue One making of, but they did not tell that story. It was all Gareth Edwards. They didn't show Tony Gilroy at all on the Rogue One doc. I want to see that story. How about this? Do, tell that story in the Andor. There should well, they, be a Star Wars gallery for but Andor. But I mean, Andor's been out for almost, it's been what, almost a year, You're, right? They're, they're, obviously, they're not going to release a, a Star Wars gallery, a making of. I don't think they're going to do it. That's stupid. That you, you could tell us, you know, that, that whole relationship. Because I choose to believe that Gareth Edwards still is a very important part of Rogue One because he set up the look, the vibe, the aesthetic. He understood what it was, and him being the Star Wars enthusiast, I feel like he got a, he got all of that right. And then maybe he didn't have an ending. Tony, come on in, tie it together, punch it give up. us an ending, punch it up, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. Again, I would not be. I think Disney should hop on those two guys and do a Rogue Two, where they fucking steal the plans, the the Bothan spies, where they steal the plans for the second Death Star. Right off the bat, I would have Tony Gilroy writing the script. Gareth. And now we have Gareth Edwards directing. I'm Bam. kind of surprised that they haven't brought Gareth Edwards in on any of this other stuff. I agree. Like no tell it like they. What's one other Star Wars project that you could see Gareth Edwards on? Do you know? I don't know. Maybe they just give him. Like, no, 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 no. I'm asking you a trivia question. I, give me one other Star Wars project that Gareth Edwards was a part of besides Rogue oh. One. He was actually a part of some. Was he a part of Mandalorian? Oh, this guy. <laughs> Woo! I'm the best. 
Star Wars fan in the world. All right, well, well, what is it? I'm so much better than you. Come on, baby. I'm so much better than you at Star Wars. Come on, sing, sing with me. So much better than you. Yeah, yeah. So much better than him. Dave is so much better than Jared at Star Wars. <laughs> All right. Um, he was a cameo in um, Episode Eight, Last Jedi, Battle of Crate. He was one of the guys in the trench. Oh, okay. That movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, it, it counts. It counts. Okay, it counts. It counts. Mm. All right. That's the thing. Now, this is, let's go from that Tony Gilroy George talk to topic number two, which I thought was very interesting. You have an insane rumor. Oh, yeah. And this, it has more to do with this is like the GL, big, George Lucas. Yes. So this is the big rumor that's going around. All right. All talk the, to us. Is, Get that phone high. Get Disney is in talks to sell Lucasfilm and George Lucas is the buyer. <laughs> okay. Rumor with major update. So this is on... Um, yeah, we have to give a shout, shout out. Really, it's not a shout out. We have to give the blame so that we okay. don't want you and we don't want anyone mad at us. So this was what on the... What podcast said this? So or, this is the uh, Overlord DVD on YouTube? Okay, the Overlord DVD on YouTube says <laughs> Disney is going to be selling with, Star Wars packages With uh, Cameron P- Pasha. And then the description on it's a uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's thirty. We got we gave him the plug. Yeah. Overlord DVD Hold says on. this. So Go ahead. He goes, Disney's in big financial trouble and desperate times call for desperate measures, including shutting down project, liquidating assets, and selling Lucasfilm. <laughs> this is what a source told me on Monday, as I reported in my last video Great, about the, these rumors. Way to be specific. This is what a source, even if it's anonymous. Well, You're supposed to say, I know, if you do something like this, a, 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 a higher up who works at Lucasfilm spoke to me on the condition of anonymity. Not just a source said this. Go ahead. Okay, he goes, and after that video, I was contacted by Cameron uh, Pasha, whose source uh, codenamed Sparrow independently confirmed much of what my source alleged. But then added one detail. They believe George Lucas is the buyer. Okay. So but, let's just stop because it's, it's, I, I hate the way this person writes. They don't write a great uh, description. A lot of burying of the leads and a lot of bad journalism in there that's well, driving me crazy. As someone who got an A plus in two journalism classes in college. So I know what I'm talking about. You know what my fucking journalism professor used to call me? What? Darth Woodward. That's what he used to call me. You know, like, what? and he probably would have called him Jedi Bernstein, you know, with the whole Jewish thing. We could be like modern day Woodward and Bernstein, me and you. That's what we should do from now on. Try to solve a whole bunch of shit as, oh, as, like, as like, newspaper men. Uh, I, I suppose this is the best time to, to put a plug out there, eh? <laughs> What's the plug? That, that we appeared on the uh, History Homos podcast. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't want to say the title. But yeah, oh, well, I said it. That's the name of the show, folks. Sh- shout out to Scott and uh, William. We discussed. I, did, I mean, I did, I did have a fun time with Scott William. It was great, and we discussed Watergate. And we, we discussed dis- Watergate. And we discussed the Watergate and how, in my personal opinion, Watergate ties to uh, the Kennedy assassination, which ties to the uh, incident at Roswell in Area Fifty One. But again, let's. The, the, this isn't fucking conspiracy channel. Okay. okay? Now, conspiracy chat. Now. We gotta keep the alliteration um, going. Now, um, thoughts and opinions about George Lucas by Star Wars. How much just, bullshit is this just fucking did a story? Whole bit on George Lucas, like getting significantly old, right? Why is a billionaire who has been completely disgusted by the industry going to buy back like the main source of his agita? Also, George. You know, never forget at the time when G- people thought George selling Star Wars for $4 billion to was, Disney was, was like the biggest thing ever. And Sam Jackson said he should have sold it for 10 Yeah. And everyone thought Sam Jackson was, oh, he's funny. He's making a joke. And no, he was he, right. He was serious. He was, I mean, but, but also, he was right. So my point being, how much would fucking George have to spend now 
on his own property. Disney's not going to sell it back to him for four billion. They'd probably fucking stood. They would. They know the evaluation of Star Wars. They're not going to sell it back to George for ten billion. So he's going to be broke buying back his own fucking movies. This just, whole story makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I know that there's a lot of rumors that you go think, out. Um, you know, I mean, if everyone, they think I'm going to, what, buy buy back my, um, you know, my goddamn franchise from those white slavers? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know anyone, uh, you know, with, back in, uh, you know, the pre-Civil War days, you know, who would sell a slave and then all of a sudden say, hey, you know what, I'd like him back. You know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pay three times as much. That never happened. I saw Django. <laughs> you know, with, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. They tell me that's the, how it was done back then. Well, I mean, he's not, you know, selling uh, the slave and then saying, give me, give, give me back. Give me, a, you know, you know, those white slavers. Now, if they want me to, you know, work on Star Wars, that's one thing. Just pay me the $4 billion as a consultant fee. Thank you very much. Now, um, by the way, fuck you, Liger. You know, if you ever see me, uh, you know, if, if you're ever uh, on the same uh, side of the sidewalk there, you know, and you see me coming, you fucking cross, uh, you cross the road. You understand me, Iger? Don't take this as a threat, but you know what I've done with $4 billion? Let's just say I got $100,000 in a briefcase over here and $100,000 in a briefcase over there. And whoever takes you out first, whatever fucking hitman takes out Iger first is going to get the goddamn money. You think that I'm not going to, you know, fucking use some of this money to get some revenge? $100,000. you are a dead man. Cheap for murder? How much do you, uh, you know, how, how, how much should I be spending We're here? We're talking about the CEO of a very CEO large of, of, of let's not even Let's not even okay, talk yeah, about this. Let's not even talk let's about this. Let's, you know, Stephen, I mean, you know, Stephen, you know, if, if, if Jared isn't into it, you give me a call. I'll give you the $100,000, Stephen. Okay, let's not talk about yeah, that. Let's All not right. talk about this. He's going to give me a lot of trouble. But do you think... Maybe Francis. He knows a lot of people. You know, he's, oh, yeah, a, he's, he's Italian. A, he's got connections. Yeah. You know Italian people, they, they, they're all in the mob. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe I should... You know what? Forget about Stephen. He wouldn't know. You know, but if I go to Francis and, you know, Francis, here's $100,000. What can I get, you know? I'm sure at least Iger's legs will be broken, at least. <laughs> so, you know, Francis, give me a call. Also, I'd like to make Tucker part two, Francis. But that's a different conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the, I don't think... I, I'm pressing X to doubt. I don't think that this is... Why would George do that? It doesn't make... He's retired. <laughs> He's, not doing it. He's not doing it. He's retired. He's not doing it. I love the fact that this person's quite creative. The person who did this podcast just decided to make something up because that's all they did. What? There is no chance in hell that Disney is trying to sell Star Wars back to George Lucas. They're not going to. None. They literally will None. remake. For what reason? Where would George Lucas go to then release the Star Wars movies? There's no Fox Studios anymore. No. He'd have to either go to Warner Brothers or Sony. Right. And is that happening? Like, come on. This whole thing. Or he just does it himself. He's got the money. But I don't think he has the money for whatever. You always need a distribution partner. You always need a studio to distrib distribute the film. That's why he would have to go to Fox even during the prequel, you know, era. Because he had the money to finance it himself. But you, you, you can't just... Now, all of a sudden, well, I've paid for the... Now, you know, put my movie in all the theaters. Someone has to do it for you. That's where the studios come in. All right, so this story's bullshit. I, I'm pressing X to doubt. Yeah, I don't. I, I, this is a, this, uh, listen. Why would it we send? we congratulate you and we compliment you on trying to you know lie so blatantly to people, but there's no chance in fucking hell that George Lucas what? is trying to buy back Star Wars. Yeah, like, and there's no chance Disney's selling Star Wars. Look, <laughs> Star Wars makes Disney money. money. Absolutely. Did Solo bomb? Yes. All of the other movies made money for him. Yeah, they made, they all turned profit. Merch they... makes money. That's how George Lucas got his fortune. Oh my God. The amount of merch. At this point, you keep those fucking things around just to sell merch. I think that's why he sold it so cheap. He just realized he's got like more money than God. Like... All right, I, they're giving me like a, a really not, it's a decent offer, four billion dollars for the whole thing. I've made so much fucking money. I never have to work again. My kids never have to work again. My grandkids, like he's Still. got multi generational. Hey man, wealth. you don't. He shouldn't have cut Disney a break. 
You know, that's crazy to me. Well, I think he just wanted it out at that point. I think someone gave him bad advice. I think his fucking lawyer and his accountant fucked him over. Right. And now old man George is pissed. Now, what the hell did you guys uh, do, do to me? Four billion? Goddamn, you know, The Force Awakens made four billion dollars. Two billion in box office and two billion in merch. You motherfuckers. They made their money back after the first movie. Yeah, wh so why would they sell something that they've already probably already made? Like, they've got their return on the earned investment. They made all of their money back after episode seven. Everything after that has been gold. Profit. So, it's insane. All right. I just, I, 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 can't, I just can't see it. Why would anyone ever do that when you're like, you're retired? He, I he, think he might still want to consult, or I oh, think yeah. he's a guy who has stories and he's a creative guy yeah. so i think he you know, that's the thing disney like you infuriate me so much sometimes have you at least tried there's star wars visions there's star wars this there's star wars that there's star wars the other thing have you not thought man let's just do a fucking george lucas star wars story on disney plus you don't have to put two hundred fifty million dollars behind it and make a in, into a, a big huge movie or a trilogy. Take a George Lucas idea and make a Disney Plus series out of it and tell everyone this is the George Lucas deal right here. Well, People would fucking go nuts. I, I I have a feeling that if when when and if Kathleen Kennedy is removed, that's where you're gonna if if, if Filoni is, is put in charge of all of Lucasfilm. I think that's when you'll start seeing George hanging out a little bit more. That's possible. Um, <coughs> okay. Ahsoka. Yes. Release date. August 23rd, they just announced. New TV spot. Yes. Sort of, you know, it was, it was a cut down version of the trailer, it looked like. Um, eight episodes. Eight episodes. Release date is August 23rd. So we're looking at two months and a week. That two months a, and two an weeks. Odd time to release that show. All right, on the mic, please. I you, think you're, you're, there you. All go. right, well, at least where we live, it's an odd time to release that show. Now, why is that? Because at least in the Northeast, which is like everyone goes on vacation, so you're looking, you're looking at maybe ten percent, fifteen percent of the country is going to be on vacation. Well, yeah. Like, maybe I, I I maybe in the, the the northern half of the country. I mean the southern half's already back at school. They've already been So back you would have waited till September? Yeah. When everyone's back to school. Or how about like, you bump it up into July? Everyone's everyone people still go on vacation then. Well the summer shows are big, bro. We just talked about Twin Peaks. That was a summer show. Was that really? Yeah. I don't remember. if it's the right show it actually can 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 be ultra hot because usually in the summertime you get reruns and crappy programming. So when you deliver something awesome, it actually sometimes can really work to your advantage. Because so, there's nothing else on. Yeah. But. Um, I'm excited for it. Me too. It's sad that um, that man Stevenson died. What's his name? Ray Stevenson? Ray Stevenson, yes. Mm. And uh, that's sad. Now, on that uh, new TV spot, we so saw Sabine. I, I, and, uh, I, I think she, we saw Ezra. I heard a little bit about his backstory. In, who? Uh, the Ray Stevenson character. Okay. He was a former Jedi who survived uh, Order 66. Mm -hmm. And now he's a mercenary for hire. Okay. A, a hired sword. That's kind of cool. I'm into it. By the way, I see a lot of people complaining about Order 66 online. A lot of uh, tired-ass takes, in my opinion, about... Go get ready for another flashback of Order 66. I'm like, speak for yourself, you motherfucker. What? I love Order 66. I've told Jared they should make an Order 66 series where you see Order 66 from like 100 different viewpoints. That's like the Every whole... episode could be a different Order 66. There's a whole fucking shitload of Jedis. You, you could have every episode be one Jedi getting exterminated on Order 66. I love Order 66. It's arguably the most significant day in the history of Star Wars. It's like Kennedy, in that galaxy. Kennedy getting shot. Kennedy assassination. So um, in case you haven't noticed, they, uh, they've they made a lot of movies and TV series and books about the Kennedy assassination. So um, yeah, people complaining about Order 66, go suck on a lemon, you know, because your, your cliche, boring, tired ass takes where you just repeat what everyone else says online your fucking negativity ain't going to get in my fucking wheelhouse. 
Okay, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka, and I'm looking forward to seeing more Order 66. And if they keep showing us Order 66 with each fucking series, I'm going to be happy. Order 66 is fascinating to me. And I think to a lot of people. And you know who obviously it's fascinating to? Dave Filoni and George Lucas. Say, so what do you think? You think maybe it really is an important date? And maybe you should stop with the griping? Or is that all we do on Twitter? <laughs> I don't like stuff. I don't like anything. Shut up! And that's why I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> Thoughts and opinions about Order 66. My Order 66 diatribe. Am I wrong? No, you're right. It's you a, like Order 66 it's still? It's a huge turning point in the lore. <laughs> like It's also really interesting. I can't get enough of the Jedi Temple itself. But again, this shit was happening all over the galaxy. Like, so there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in, on on that day. And how many, like, it's the idea that this is, we're dealing with the fallout now. And, and it's the turn of Anakin Skywalker and yeah. Darth, to Darth Vader. It's the turn of the fucking Palpatine into the Emperor. I mean, besides just Order 66, that day is so fucking huge. It's the same day Yoda admits basically defeat and has to go into hiding. I mean, this is a really big deal. Yeah. The, Golly. They need to stop fucking complaining. Yes. Or they'll just be like, there's no more Star Wars. <laughs> One of these days, they're going to say that. And you know what I thought about? We discussed this the other day. I th- said, you know what's going to make the, 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 the saddest thing about dying for me is that I won't get to see any new Star Wars. Yes. And that's starting to fill me with anxiety. So I would like it if when I die, they stopped making Star Wars. If, we could, if I could write a contract up with Kathleen Kennedy or something. Like Harrison Ford and Indiana <laughs> Jones. Once I'm gone, he's gone. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know, when I'm dead, I can't be missing fucking new Star Wars. That's not fair. That's when they'll finally fill in the goddamn Emperor fucking <laughs> gap with how he survived. We've waited enough time. Yeah, the year, you know, 3021 is when they fucking decide to fill that shit in. Um, all right, Ewan McGregor. Yes. So, uh, the little girl. Her name is, uh, was it? Vivian, I'll bring that up now. The little girl played Leia. Yes, her name is Vivian Lara Blair. She said that Ewan McGregor wants to make Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 2, yes? Yes, so this was comicbook.com. Obi-Wan Kenobi star says Ewan McGregor is begging for Season 2 uh, by Patrick Kavanaugh. Uh, Let's go! Kavanaugh? By Patrick Kavanaugh. Listen, Ewan McGregor should not... Be having to beg anyone to do Obi-Wan Kenobi shit. Do you understand? And Disney, stop fucking taking it out on legendary characters if your modern creators fuck up. Now listen, I, no, I'm not saying I thought Obi-Wan Kenobi was a fuck up. I liked the series. They're obviously was it was, again, another little bit of a polarizing thing. Some people didn't like it. I don't know why still to this day, but some people didn't like it. But it's what's weird is, because it sometimes, you know, it, it got a little bit of a mixed reaction, I would say. Um, Disney takes it out on the characters. Well, I guess people aren't into Obi-Wan Kenobi anymore. Well, No the- assholes. They're not into your execution uh- of Obi-Wan Kenobi's story. Don't take it out on you and McGregor. I want to see more Obi Wan Kenobi series. So correct me if so. They've now tried to reframe it that it's a standalone series, but the way they ended it was very open ended. Like he's gonna be t- taught by Qui Gon now. There's Qui Gon Jinn. He's a Force ghost. This is the first like this is technically a re- like the first time we've actually seen a Force ghost, right? Chronologically. Chron- chronologically. We know that he's reached out to Yoda before. We know he's reached out to Anakin before. But this is the first time we actually saw, you know, a, a full-on Force ghost. And it it's him leaving the homestead, clearly going somewhere. No doubt. And again, you can do... Look, you've done this before with, like, Marvel, right? It starts Captain America... And then the next movie was Captain America and the Winter Soldier. 
Why not keep it simple? Obi-Wan Kenobi, or, or just Kenobi and Vader. And if you don't want to do my Vader series, you have Obi-Wan over here with the Qui-Gon stuff, with some cool Cantina stuff maybe. Maybe he has to leave uh, Tatooine for a mission here and there. And then on the other show, they, they, they never have to meet. They never have to connect. The other half is the Vader series that I discussed. And the whole thing is Kenobi and Vader. Or actually, you probably want to call it Vader and Kenobi. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. But that's something you could do with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series season two. There's a lot of things that they can do that can, like, not affect everything else. You know? Yeah. Don't make Ewan McGregor beg. What's that all about? I mean, get him now while he's, like, still relatively young. While he wants to do it! He's great as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I enjoy seeing him on my screen. Would you say that he's now kind of supplanted Alec Guinness? I'd have to. As Obi-Wan. I'd have to. Screen time is just so much more significant. And Guinness was flesh and blood Obi-Wan for one movie. Okay, I agree. I agree. All right. By the way, Alec Guinness, that's a, that's a good name to bring up. He never wanted to do any of the sequels until George sent him huge, huge fucking sums of money. Whereas Alec, I mean, uh, Ewan McGregor wants like, to do them all the time. I know. It's so, like, so let funny. the guy do it. Hello, if you have Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor wanting to fucking do more Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, can you do it? We want to see it. And if you don't know how to tell legacy character stories, give me a call! Because I know what the fuck to do! Next one. Okay. Uh... Han Solo is coming back to the Dave Filoni universe and his name is Alden Ironreich. Somehow it's been confirmed that Leia will be recast by a human. And Alden Ironreich is back as Han Solo for the Dave Filoni movie. Okay, what do you think about this? I think it's smart. It's what people want to see. They want to see legacy characters. This is what they, like, we talked about this a lot with last week about, about like, passing the torch and stuff like that. But, you know, you have this past, like, this huge gap of time now between episodes six and seven where they could have all sorts of shit that's happening with the New Republic and other enemies that are rising that either are remnants of the uh, the Empire or maybe a new enemy surfaces. Like, this is what, like, so many people have written, I know you don't want to hear it, so many people have written books and developed lore that they can at least pull from to make a movie or a television show or whatever you want to have. That's fine. Unless, I, I mean, I'm not against books. I mean, I like Timothy no, bro, Zahn. I'm, I, I want any good ideas, though, to show up on screen. No, that's what that's I'm saying. That's all. Like, they have all this that Filoni, Filoni and whoever else he's working with can pull from to be like, okay, we like this book, but we like this idea from this. This is this is this. That's what he's doing with 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 uh, Zahn and and, and, Thra and Thrawn. Oh, no doubt. Like he's I'm literally excited. calling I'm the in... movie Heir to the Empire. I, 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 and I think it's great. And I, and I think it's great. And honestly, when I was a kid and I read those books or a teenager and I read those books, I was like, why aren't they making these into movies? It, they, they were absolutely thrilling. And in some ways, a little bit, a little bit better than the fucking sequel trilogy. Just a little bit. A little bit better. Yeah, or maybe a lot better. Because our heroes actually did shit. Our heroes like Luke Skywalker and I tell them did shit. If it does like I did shit, they didn't just stand around and act like dicks. So that he's got twenty to thirty years now where he can play with all these characters doing shit. Ew. You didn't mean that like in that tag way you meant earlier. No, meant, like, like in that sexual like action, way. This is like okay. action figures. Okay, fine. Um brings me to my next topic. Uh my my next talking point. Best Star Wars female. We, uh, we sometimes do a, car uh, a segment called Star Wars Best. I want your Star Wars Best female character in the Disney Plus era. Has to be shown on screen. In the Disney Plus era, whether it's the movies or series, I need them shown on screen. Bo-Katan. 
I'll allow it. It was made, she was made in the Clone Wars era. However, live action was the first time we saw her, and I'll allow it. Well, she was also in Rebels, and that was Disney, right? Yes. Was that part of the Disney era? Yes, 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 yes. And Clone Wars almost wasn't like anything. Really, it wasn't, because it wasn't Fox. It was was George. Yeah, so I'm going to allow it. I like Bo. I like Bo-Katan. I think, uh, I think she, she's had such a, a crazy arc where, like, she's gone from – it's almost full circle in the sense that, like, she starts as a terrorist and now is a, quote-unquote, freedom fighter. So, like, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Can I – So, we've gone from bad guy doing the oh, same thing – Oh, she's good, yeah. To good guy. Yeah, I like that. I, that is – am I allowed – to do this. The Disney version of Mon Mothma. Is that legal? Yeah, why why wouldn't it be? Because she came out in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, but it's not the same actress. All right. Then that's your call. And you only see Mon Mothma what for like just that one scene. Like Ten seconds. Right? Yeah, many Balkans died to give us this information. We- I remember it, even as a kid saying, shouldn't that be Leia? Say that shit. But here's the deal. I was a kid. I was always a little confused. Who is that lady? Why didn't Leia say all of that, that speech? That should be Leia up there, right? Now I love Mon Mothma. After what they did for her in Andor. And the fact that um, she's in Ahsoka, right? We just saw yeah, her. yeah. She's been in a, like she's been in. So everything. she's gonna be in Ahsoka, she, which well, is very cool to me. Well, they, they brought her back. She's now appeared in episode three, right? Clone Wars. At Revenge of the Sith was a cutting room floor thing. Oh, well, was that okay? Yeah, she so, wasn't in so the they, movie, they, but they brought her. Same in. actress, Genevieve O'Reilly. Yeah, but she was in Rogue One. But she also voiced, she's been voicing it. Voicing the Mon Mothma character in Rebels and so on and so Clone, forth. Clone Wars. Yeah. Like, she's more or she's less. She's Andor and now Ahsoka. So she is Mon Mothma. Like, it's the same way, like. And I like her Mon Mothma. You and McGregor. I enjoy it. It's like the way we just said that you and McGregor is Obi-Wan. Yeah. She is Mon Mothma. And I think she does a great Mon Mothma. I, I think she's really fleshed out that character because the character always, I, I hate to say this, it was a little weird to me. It was one to me because... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm legi- I was legitimately a little bit irritated. Believe it or not, Darth David can be slightly insane and hot-headed. You think? <laughs> and I was a little bit, as a kid, pissed off that Leia was not giving that speech. I felt like it made sense in episode four, she was so young. But now, by episode six, she's by Return general. of the Jedi, she's, she's the general. fucking general, brah. She should be giving that goddamn speech. Who is this Mon Mothma lady? Until Genevieve O'Reilly's portrayal, now I'm Mon Mothma through and through. Okay. I love Mon Mothma. What a character. No, she's a great character. All right. Well, you, you know, you need, you need a, a I'm going to say, politician. let's see, bo Mon Mothma, Star Wars version. I think I, I think I won that one. Thank you. I didn't Five points was, for me, minus two for you. I, no, that was competition. Oh, yeah. Minus three, actually. Since you didn't realize it, minus three now. Okay. And that also makes it minus five for Joe Dallas. It's easier. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Easier numbers. Minus ten. Um, final. Is that it? Final. Final Final thing. Um, we, oh, you uh, the cage match. Oh, no, no. You, you were going you were to say every, what you do after I leave. When Jared leaves, after every Yaddle Chattel, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I watch a Star Wars. Okay? I know. It's going to sound nuts. But Yaddle Chattel gets me so hyped for Star Wars that I then need to experience some Star Wars. So, my the options we're going to do... The name of this segment is When Jared Leaves. <laughs> I, I got to workshop the title a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, When Jared Leaves... Yes. What should I watch? These are your options. I am going to watch Rebels Season 2 because I've gone back in preparation for Ahsoka. I watched Season 4. I wanted to catch up real quick. And then actually I enjoyed 
season four so much, I went back and watched season three. So now I'm doing it backwards like an asshole. So are you just going to go back to like, you're going to rewatch all the Clone I'm doing Wars, it backwards. Or are you going to watch all the Kia Ahsoka episodes Hold on. on the Clone Wars? Hold on. Rebels is a full on thing. Okay. Disney Plus does have an essential Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars episodes. Okay. That was going to be option number two. Okay. And option number three, because I knew we were going to be talking about uh, this show and that I was going to be all hyped up about it. Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So I'm going to watch one of the following three. I want Jared to make a suggestion. The Obi-Wan series, Rebels season two, or the Ahsoka Tana important episodes in Clone Wars. You know what? I'm, you're not going to believe what I'm going to say. I'm going to say watch Obi-Wan. For what reasons? I think you're going to rewatch it and be like, why aren't they making a season two? Why haven't they greenlit it? Why didn't they, like, why is, there's a writer's strike right now? Like, they could have been easily, like, had it at least ready in the can, ready to be production post writer strike so they have content to fucking fill. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going back and watching Obi-Wan as soon as you leave. And I'll, so with the Dave man? Because I have my little nap in the afternoon and there's no NBA Finals today, but my body clock is now used to... Watching the NBA get, Finals. Yeah, it's like I'm, <laughs> I'm used to staying up till midnight or one o'clock in the morning, even though I have to get up at five in the morning for my, you know, very successful AM morning radio job. Davey Mac, 95.9 The Rat, WRAT-FM. Listen to us anywhere at WRAT.com. Is, 6 to 10 is the Stanley mornings. Cup still going on? Yeah. And I, I, I tune in... But, but I'm not going to lie. You know, you're more into the basketball than the hockey. I'm into the NBA Finals more, yeah. Who, who's but, in the Finals? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Denver Nuggets versus the Miami Heat. Oh, Nikola yeah. Jokic. Do you know who he is? He's a big, tall, big you know, Slavic guy. Seven foot Serb- <laughs> big seven-foot <laughs> Serbian. That lo- he looks like everything he does hurts. He moves like Frankenstein a little bit. Well, and he's yeah. very herky-jerky, and he's fucking amazing. He gets triple doubles every goddamn game. It's fucking insane. Anyway, um... All right, so I think I'm I'm gonna watch Obi Wan. Okay. Now give us a cage match. All right, let's go. Well, since we're, we're since we're doing women, uh, let's excuse me. Since we're doing women, the ew, women's. The ew. Women's. First tag. Now doing women. Okay. Okay. Since we're discussing female characters I'm amid so- Star Wars. I'm sorry. The future is the force is female. Whatever. Whatever. Jesus. Those, that that those shirts that they. I'm just there. saying. There's there's proper ways to present these things. Go okay. ahead, please. In honor of the ladies. Okay. Let's, let's, you know, let's. Hey, ladies! Our, let's put them in a cage. Let's put Mom Mothma and Bo Katan in a cage. <laughs> on, what? No, I'm that match up is hard. Around. Around. I like Mon Mothma, but you're going to have to go with like another uh, diplomat type, another okay. uh, another dignitary. The, but the, I'm, I'm curious about Mon Mothma in a cage. Okay. But give us a dignitary. I guess Leia technically was <laughs> dignitary. No, what what was the name? What was the name of that character that was supposed to replace Padme in uh, the Bad Batch? You could tell like she was a little bit annoying. She had like the Australian accent, and she's supposed to fill in like she's the good, you know, oh, ha- yeah. happy politician. But she can also like I don't know. That's too inside too. Right, go so with the movie. Let's go, go with Padme then. All right, Pat. Okay, there you go. There you go. You finally got something. Her intern. Padme <laughs> versus uh, her, her, in, her intern, intern, Kira Knightley. Um, Padme versus Mon Mothma. Height advantage to Mon Mothma. I mean, she's going to look like fucking Bill Walton compared to Padme with the red hair and the height. Yeah, um, but, That's, that's going to be a huge advantage. I got to tell you, Padme doesn't have the force. So you think Padme is going to intimidate me? I just told you how much I love my, my, my man, Monty. My main man, Mon. Mon Mothma, TKO. I say she fucking knocks Padme down three times. Refs calls it. Says, fuck it. Stop it. Padme's got two bloody eyes. No, no more. I mean, Padme's been, like, in combat. <laughs> like, she knows her way around a weapon. Not really. What are you talking about? She was. She literally was commanding clone troopers. I don't remember that. In episode two, she's like, she gets on the lift, and she's like, we got to go that way. What? Yeah, that never happened. Yeah, it did. Oh yeah, that's right. She f- then she fell out of that uh, well, ship. You know, she was in heels. 
Just kidding. That, that's a joke. <laughs> but she did fall out of the ship onto the sand dune. She couldn't keep her balance took, like a fucking and, idiot. And clearly she was able... Well, no, didn't they get hit or something? Yeah, well, they, that, that's why the straps were there. Hold on to him, idiot. You ever go to a New York subway yeah, and, and, and not, not, not hold it, that thing? You're going to go flying. I know. I have terrible balance. Well, Padme... That's on you. In fact, this reinforces. Mad with Mon Mothma definitely wins this fight. Plus five for me, minus five for you. That'll do it. God bless you. God bless. And, go, and God bless. And so, how how about this air quality? We didn't even discuss that. Oh well, I knew. everyone's canceling shit. We didn't cancel our show. No, and that's what Yattle Child does for you. I was literally in New York City today. It was fun. You were in you were in New York. Today? Yeah, it smelled like a hot dog cart everywhere I went, but I, I, I was fine. And that, that was because I was in New York, but I'm pretty sure that was because of the smoke. Yeah, it's awful out there. I don't know what the hell happened. Thanks it's a, a lot, lot, Canada. It's a lot better today. All right, blame Canada, I guess. I guess the fucking South Park people were right. Uh, yeah, they all those were years right. ago, they called it. They called it. Um, Jared, that'll do it. That will. What do would it you like then. to say before we go? Okay, again, I'd like to reiterate. I'll say it. You can check out uh, History Homos podcast. will be available on Sunday. Uh, it's I was a part of it. All RSS feeds. Dave and I discussed the Watergate. Uh, we gave our schizo takes on it. Um, then fun show. Fun show. Shout out to Scott and William and our super fan uh, JC. JC. And then uh, yeah, you can follow Eastside Dave across all social media platforms at Eastside Dave. Um, www. Sorry. Eastsidedave. Eastsidedavecountry.com. You screwed me up there. Uh, wherever podcasts are available, Yaddle Chattel, Eastside Dave TV, and if you haven't checked out Tales from the Satellite, the next episode's gonna be fire because it's very, very. Uh, well, rel- let's not hype it up. I know. I, oh, you, you, here, let me talk, explain to you for the uh, undersell it. There you go. Undersell yeah, under promise and over deliver. Under deliver. You got it. Look no. at Jared. And by the way, next day, Tales from the Satellite is going to be the greatest thing you've ever heard in your entire life, and you never have to listen to another podcast again. No, um, it, <laughs> we're gonna, gonna have fun. fun. We're gonna we're fun. we're gonna have fun. A little the, little fun, little controversy on Tales from the Satellite. And that's at patreon.com slash Eastside Dave. You're going to have to join the $5. Patreon exclusive well, no. show. We're, we're still working out that, but don't worry. Right now it's a 250 tier, but now it looks like we're doing two of these shows a month since these guys never want to allow me to have a day off from broadcasting. So now, uh, yeah, it's two fucking of, of these a month. So, and plus you'll get the producer credit on the $5 tier. That's cool. So you get everything that you got on the 250 tier plus these new bonuses. You mean shows. the Patreons? The Patreons, yes. Do I get a producer credit? I mean, you are the showrunner. <laughs> Listen, that'll do it. Jared, here's what I have to say. I'm very happy with Star Wars. I'm very optimistic for Ahsoka Tana in August. Let Ewan McGregor play in the Star Wars sandbox if he wants to. This ain't a tough decision. Arguably, your biggest Star Wars star in terms of actors is Ewan McGregor. Like, do something with him. That's it. That'll do it. All right. His name is Jedi Jarrett. My name is Darth David. This has been Yaddle Channel of Star Wars. Podcast. I want to thank each and every Yellowhead out there. Good night, everybody. Good night.